Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought now would be a good time to talk about taking all of those old legacy Final Cut Pro 7 projects and moving them over into Media Composer and Symphony. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how simple it is to do using a third-party plugin. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, hold on a second, Kev. I just spent all this money on Media Composer Symphony, and I don't want to spend any more money on a third-party plugin to move all of my legacy projects over. Well, the best part about this tutorial is it's not going to cost you any more money than you've already spent to get up and running inside a Media Composer. We're going to do this absolutely free, and when you see how simple it is, I guarantee you're not going to worry about pulling your hair out anytime you have to bring an old project back to work with it inside of Media Composer or Symphony. Okay, short introduction, let's just get into Final Cut Pro 7, and let's get started. Okay, now the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get into your internet browser of choice, in my case it's Firefox, and what you're going to want to do is head over to automaticduck.com. Now, before we get in and actually download the software, I want you to head on over and I want you to click on the Thank You for 10 Great Years link. Now, here's a great message from Wes Plate and Harry Plate, the co-founders of Automatic Duck. And the most important part of this whole uh, letter to read is, is right down here at the very bottom, basically what they're saying is, is that because they've moved on to bigger and better things, they don't want their software to go to waste and they, they can't really you know charge for it anymore because they're not going to be updating it so what they've decided to do is they're going to give it away absolutely free you can see right there so what does that mean for you that means that you're going to be able to take all of your Final Cut Pro 7 projects and move them over to Media Composer absolutely free so what we want to do is we want to head over to Pro Export for Final Cut Pro and once there you're going to click on the download link which is located right here now once you have the software downloaded and installed, what we're going to do is just hide out of Firefox here for a second. I'm going to Command Tab into Final Cut Pro. You'll see that we have a new project here. The first thing I'll do is I'll just hit Command, Shift, and S to save this project. I'll just save it into FCP Project for Avid. Of course, we'll call it FCP Project for Avid, appropriately enough. We'll say Save. And now that we have it installed, what we're going to do is if we navigate up to File, we can come down to Export, and you can see right here we have Automatic Duck Pro Export for Final Cut Pro. So why don't we create a little sequence just to simulate what would happen if you're doing this with a real sequence. So what I'm going to do is just right-click. We'll just say Import Some Files here. We'll just take some elephant shots here. I'll just simply say Choose. And I'm just going to pick some parts of the shots completely random here. We'll just take that. I'm going to hit F10 to edit that into my timeline. Of course, this is HDV 1080i. And right now, I believe my sequence is set up for 720p 2398. So of course, I want to switch the sequence settings to match the clip. And we'll take just, why not elephants too? Sure. I'll just mark an endpoint again. We'll just come down here. Again, just drop this into the timeline. Sure, elephants three. Why not? Got a baby elephant off to itself here. We'll just hit F10. And there we go. Now you can see this is about, oh, I don't know, 24 seconds long. I think that's even a little bit too long. What I'm going to do is we're just going to chop this down here. Just we only have the bare minimum here. We'll just delete this, delete this. I'm going to close the gap. I'm going to close the gap. And I think I'm going to take one last shot here. We'll create a bit of a composite to sort of simulate, you know, a real world project. So what I'm going to do is I'll just come down to shot eight because it's a pretty long shot. It's 23 seconds long. And I'll just grab it sort of from right about here. I'll mark that as my endpoint. We'll just add a new track of video. We'll just drag this right down. And I'll stick it on video track two. Now, I don't want the audio with this because I already have the audio for tracks one and tracks two. So what I'll do is just hit Command and L to unlink those. And let's just have a, we'll just shrink this down and have it move from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. So let's just set the scale at about, well, probably about 33%. We'll just position this off frame like such. We'll come back to the beginning here. I'll add a keyframe. We will jump down to the end and we'll come back one frame. We'll add a keyframe right there. We'll just make this plus 966 just like such. And now what we have is we have the shot moving across the screen. Very nice. Now one thing I'm also going to do here just because I know what the outcome of it's going to be is I'm going to add a drop shadow to this because I know that the transfer process does not support drop shadows, but I'm just going to add it in anyways here. 
just because I want to show you exactly what happens and how we can fix this once we get into Symfony. Okay, so what I'm going to do is hit Command and S to save this project. And I'm going to navigate up to Sequence 1, and of course we'll call this 4 Media Composer. I'm going to select that sequence. We're going to navigate up to File. I'm going to come down to Export, and I'm going to come down to Automatic Duck Pro Export. Now, in most cases, when the train's going to get derailed, this is where it happens, because most people don't have any idea what to do when they're in here. Now, the first thing that we're going to want to do, since we're going to Media Composer version 6.5, is we're going to want to choose AAF as our export option, not OMF, AAF. The next thing we're going to want to do is edit the settings. Now, inside of here, the first option right up at the top, the effects, we want them to be Avid compatible. The next thing we want to do is we want to get in and we want to create externally linked files or MXF files. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our project type that we're going to is going to be 1080i because this is HDV, and we're actually going to convert the footage to DNX145. Now, the reason that we're doing this is because this footage is, like I said, it's, uh, it's HDV that was digitized inside of Final Cut Pro, so this footage will actually not play back on a Windows machine unless you have a third-party plugin, which we don't want to get into. We don't want to mess around with that. Why don't we just let Pro Export FCP convert the files to, in this case, DNX145? Next, as far as audio goes, we're going to want to create externally linked files. We'll create PCM.MXF Media at 48 uh, kilohertz, 16 bit. And I think what we'll do is we'll just break this down. We'll just add handles of, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 frames. Now, obviously, depending on what you still need to do when you're taking these legacy projects over, you might want to take the entire clip, you might want not want to have any handles, or you might want to add handles in. Now, like I said, in this case, we're going to have 15 frame handles. I'm simply going to say save. It's going to want to know where I'm going to want to save this to, so we'll just create a new folder. We'll call this FCP for MC. And inside here, you see it's already called for MC, and I'm simply going to hit save. Now, what's going to happen is, is that the clips that are in my timeline are going to be exported into that folder. And what's going to happen during that exporting process is the files are going to be converted from QuickTime.MOVs to Avid.MXF files. Now, depending on how much footage you have, this process could be very short, in my case, or it could be very, very long if we're talking about, you know, an hour-long show. Now, you'll see it's doing Elephant's clip number one, which is a relatively shorter clip. Once it gets to, obviously, Elephant's clip eight, which was the clip that was about 23 seconds long, you're going to notice, obviously, a bit longer time to export that. Obviously, audio is going to export pretty instantly. But overall, in most cases, if you're exporting an hour-long show, what I'd suggest is start the export process going, go and get lunch. And when you come back, the footage is going to be ready to be copied over onto your Windows machine. Or if you happen to be using a Mac, you're obviously going to be staying on this machine. But I wanted to switch over to Windows just to show you that no matter what system you're using, PC or Mac, Automatic Duck Pro Export is really going to save the day at that bargain basement price of free. Okay, and now that our export is done, you'll see a little Windows popped up to tell me that one of my sequences, or in this case, the sequence contained one or more unsupported effects. So what exactly does that mean? Well, you'll remember I told you before that that drop shadow that I added was unsupported. Now, let's just see if there's anything else that was unsupported. So what I'm going to do is just hide out of Final Cut Pro, and you'll see that I have my folder called FCP for MC. I'm going to double click on that and in here what I have is I have a folder that contains all of my media as MXF files. I also have the AAF which you'll remember is the actual edit decision list and I have an HTML file. What I'm going to do is just simply double click on that and you'll see that in here it's telling me that the unsupported effect is of course drop shadow. Now like I said we're going to get into Media Composer and Symphony and we're going to add that drop shadow back in but it's always great you know to have this breakdown of exactly what is not supported and it even tells you the time code of the event as well so you'll be able to go through and fix anything that's not supported moving from one application to another. Okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to the Windows side and I'm going to show you how easy this sequence is to import into Symphony and why you're going to be back up and running in no time flat. Okay, so we're now on the Windows side, and we obviously need our footage and our AAF file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Windows E to call up the Windows Explorer. I'm going to navigate down to KPM, appropriately enough. We'll just give the computer a second here to scan all of my shared folders on the Mac here. And there's really only one that I want. It's the desktop items. And what I'm going to do is take my FCP for MC. I'm going to take it. I'm going to drag it and drop it onto my desktop. 
You'll see it's only 737 megabytes, not that big again, only 20 seconds long. Obviously, depending on how long your show is and the resolution you're going to be sending over will vary the size of the files. Now, the first thing that we're going to need to do, most people think we're going to jump right into Symfony and start importing stuff, but we're not going to do that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy all of the media that was created inside of this 4MC folder. You'll see there are all my MXF files. And what I'm going to do is hit Windows E again. I'm going to come to my Y drive, which is my media drive, into Avid Media Files, MXF, number one. We're simply going to take this media and we're going to drag and drop it right into that folder. You'll see it really only takes a second to update. What I'm going to do is just close both folders here. I'm going to Alt-Tab into Symfony. You'll see that Symfony will take a second to update that drive. Basically what it's doing is just looking at everything that's been added and just keeping track of where everything is. What I'm going to do is open my bin. I'm simply going to right click. I'm going to navigate down to Import right here. I'm going to navigate back into that FCP for MC folder right here on my desktop. And I'm simply going to select 4MC.AAF. Once I have that selected, I know you're probably thinking, well, you know what, Kev? It really can't be that easy to take that file from Final Cut Pro, export it with media, bring it into Media Composer or Symphony. Well, you know what? It absolutely is. Take a look at what we have now. We have exactly what we had inside of Final Cut Pro now, inside of Avid Symphony and I can simply play the timeline here and as you can see I've got the audio as well I'm just not recording it you can see super loud obviously because I didn't mix it but that's okay but guess what we now have our timeline ready to go inside of Avid Symphony now again I said inside of Final Cut Pro I had the drop shadow effect now if I wanted to get in and add that what I can do is simply hit shift and Y you'll see that what has happened with uh, Pro Export Final Cut Pro is that it's taken that uh, effect that I did, that motion effect that moved the image from one side of the screen to the other with the scale. And what it's done is it's taken and it's added a picture and picture effect. Now, if I wanted to get in and add the drop shadow, all I would do is simply get in and I would promote this effect to the 3D warp and get in and simply add a drop shadow. Really, you can see getting in, taking files from Final Cut Pro and sequences and transferring them over to Media Composer Symphony really is very simple with the absolutely free, absolutely fantastic Automatic Duck Pro Export. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.